in today um, doing another travel tips video. So I hope you guys are enjoying these. Um, I've had some really great feedback so far, so we're just going to keep doing them as long as they are working out. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is how to book award travel. So um, things like flying around the world for very, very low cost. Um, that is one thing that I think a lot of people don't quite understand the whole world of. Um, and it takes a, quite a while to kind of figure it out and what's best for you. So let's jump in, shall we? So we're talking about reward, booking reward travel today. Um, basically meaning using any of your mileage um, accounts or points or loyalties for um, a various amount of different things, whether flights or airlines and um, credit card points and everything in between. So we're going to go over all that today. Um, I am going to be using our trip to Provence next July that I mentioned in the last video just as kind of a base um, to look for stuff. So we'll go through and um, kind of find out like how, how, do I, how do I actually book these flights that I'm telling you that I book on miles and points and how do you hardly spend any money to fly around the world and have amazing trips around the world. So we're going to start first with Alaska Airlines. So I live in Portland. Um, and in the Pacific Northwest, Alaska Air is kind of our top um, airline, if you will. Um, its, hub, its hub is here in Portland and Seattle. It's easy for us to get places. And so it just works out well that we use their loyalty. So I am logged into my account currently. Um, the other thing about Alaska Air that's really amazing is they have amazing partners around the world. So if we go to mileage plan and partners, just really quick so we can see, because don't forget that it's not just the airline that you choose your loyalty with um, that you can fly. It's also all of their partners around the globe. So Alaska Air partners with all of these airlines, um, really great airlines, big airlines that pretty much can take you anywhere you want to go around the world, which means that you can use your points to go pretty much anywhere. So let's just, for example, let's just um, try this out. Um, so for example, for our Provence trip, on the way home, we are flying from Paris to Portland. We have already booked this, by the way, so um, just bear with me. This is just an example. So I'm going to click one way right here on the home screen, and I'm also going to click use miles because I booked my other one way to Europe on Norwegian Air for a really cheap deal, so I wanted to use miles just for the way back. So one way, use miles. Make sure this is checked. Otherwise, none of those partner airlines will show up when you search. Paris to Portland, um, let's go to July 2017, um, and let's just say we're coming back on Wednesday the 5th. Two adults is also really important because I'm booking for myself and Nick. Sometimes what will happen is if you put just one adult but you are traveling with someone, it'll only show you the availability for one person. Okay, so as we're looking at the award availability, um, so they've telling us right here they're searching all the airports in the Paris area, so that means it'll be Charles de Gaulle, Orly, and everything else, um, which is good because you just want to get the best deal. It doesn't always necessarily matter what airport you fly into. So on Wednesday, July 5th, when we search, that's really high, 125000 um, but that is for business. Um, and you would have to fly through Minneapolis for that or go through Atlanta and Dallas-Fort Worth for that one. So if you wanted to fly business, that might be a good way to go. However, I want to look at some of these days that are, that are less miles. So for example, Thursday, July 6th looks like the least amount of miles in this week. So we can get a flight for, again, this is for economy, from Charles de Gaulle to Dallas-Fort Worth and then direct from Dallas to Portland for only 30,000 miles and $95. Considering flights on this route in July in peak season are probably going for at least six or $700 one way, um, if not more, to be honest with you. Um, so you're gonna fly American to Dallas and then Alaska home. If you did want business, there are a lot of other business options you could do. The other option is flying on the 4th of July, which, you could get, let's see what the options are. So this is flying Iceland Air from Charles de Gaulle to Iceland and then Iceland to Seattle and Seattle to, Seattle to Portland. Um, I could take the direct Iceland to Portland flight for that as well. Um, but that's 45,000 miles and $205. So a little bit more 
but depending on your schedule, um, it's just nice to know that there's quite a few options for both economy and for business. Another favorite of mine for using miles is Chase Sapphire. So I have both the Chase Sapphire card, um, credit card for my personal use, which I use almost primarily for travel because you get multiple points per dollar for travel. Um, I also have the Chase Inc. Plus credit card for my business that I use a lot. And Nick also has a Chase Sapphire card. So between the three of those cards, the really amazing thing with these Chase cards is that you can actually pool all of those points together. So it makes it really worthwhile because your points can build up a lot faster than if it's just one card grabbing points. So currently I have this pulled up. Um, I'm logged in. I have 13,850 points worth about $173 um, towards travel. However, when I show you in a minute, um, chase points are amazing for a couple different reasons. First of all, they go a long way. So this 13,000 points might not go very far in actual airline miles. Like on Alaska, for example, this wouldn't go very far for me. Um, I think it's usually about even 12,000 miles just to fly one way to, let's say, Portland to LA. So that's not actually that far in terms of how many miles you're spending. This 13,000, almost 14,000 points could probably get me two um, one-way tickets from Provence to Paris, which I'm going to show you in a minute, um, for our trip. So I'm actually getting two tickets for the price of one for not that, many, uh, not that much more in actual distance that you're flying. So they're really worthwhile in terms of how much it costs you in terms of points um, to go wherever you're going. And the amazing thing with Chase is that they do it per dollar amount. Um, so your points are actually worth actual money in, in real dollars, um, which makes it easy to understand as well. The other thing I love about Chase points is you can double dip in the mileage. So for example, if I book this flight, which I'm going to show you in a second, from Marseille in, in southern um, France to Paris for Nick and I, we will also not pay anything, and we will also um, gain those miles on whatever airline we fly. So for example, okay, let's look at this. So I'm going one way. I'm looking for uh, Marseille. And it should pop up here in a minute. Try to put the code. Okay, it usually pops up. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, Marseille to Paris. Probably make me fill in a little bit more here in a minute, but let's go to July. And let's just again say July 5th because that's what we were looking at the other day. Um, I'm doing nonstop flights only because it's so quick. I don't want to have a stopover. Okay, so it's having me confirm this. So depart from Marseille Airport. Yes, that's what I want. This is wrong. Um, I want to go to Paris, all airports because I want to see the options. Let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so here are my options. So we're looking at Wednesday, July 5th. It also shows you, which I love about Chase, is the dollar amount. And actually, if you don't even have points, you can also book directly through their website. Um, and it, a lot of times is a little bit cheaper than even Orbitz or through the airlines. Um, maybe only by like a few dollars, but still, every little bit helps. So um, I'm looking at probably later afternoon, evening, flying from Marseille to Paris. Um, now you'll notice, some of these go to Orly, which is the smaller airport in Paris, and some of them go to Charles Scott, which is the larger um, airport in Paris. I don't care where I fly into um, for this flight. I do prefer Orly just because it's easier to get into the city. However, it doesn't really matter to me. So I'm going to go just find a time that works for, for me. So let's say this time. So the 4.25 p.m., you arrive in Paris at 5.45. It comes into Orly. It's Air France, which I love flying Air France. It's non-stop, only an hour and 20 minutes. Um, you can view more details here of the flight. That's usually if you have um, like multiple flights, you can look at there, or you can look at the seat map to kind of see this isn't available, but a lot of the flights they offer, the larger ones, they'll show you the seat map. Um, so you can see it's either $77 per person or 6,184 points. Now, considering that I have almost 14,000 points, I can easily book this for both Nick and I. Um, so you can see what an amazing deal that is for free. Now, the amazing thing about these, there's not even a fee charged for this. So you're charged this amount of points and literally nothing else. Also on this flight, because Air France is a partner of Alaska, 
we will be able to collect Alaska points for this flight. And that's really a huge perk of the Chase Sapphire points is that you can double dip. You can, you can book on points and you can also grab those points from after you fly. Okay, so now you've booked flights and um, inter-Europe flights and, and international flights. I've showed you two of my favorite ways to do that, Alaska Air and the Chase Sapphire um, reward points. Now, you might ask, what about all the other stuff when you travel, like car rentals and hotels? Those can add up really fast. Um, in terms of cost. So one of my favorite ways to book rental cars is through my British Airways points. So I have the British Airways visa. I actually don't use it that often, um, but I feel like the points accrue pretty fast with this card. Um, and you don't have to have a lot of points to be able to use it for things like car rentals. Car rentals can add up really fast. And I find that using your BA, um, Avios, it actually is quite cheap to book car rentals through this, um, and it saves you actually quite a lot of money. One caveat, using um, miles to book car rentals is that 99% of the time, they're going to make you have the pickup and drop off locations the same place, which doesn't always work for us, but for this it is. We're going to be picking up and dropping off at the Marseille Airport. So let's just say July 2nd to July, let's say July 4th, so we're going to have it for two days. That's fine, probably. Um, confirm, search cars. And then it gives you your options here. So I always like to go with a name brand car company. So Avis is a, is a pretty big name brand. Um, and then it gives you the options. Now, the other thing I love about using British Airways Avios is it gives you options for cash and points. So if I have 5,000 avios here, I could do this option and do 4,300 4, 4, avios and only $80, which I looked this up earlier on Orbitz um, and it was gonna cost me probably about $200 for the same time frame that I'm showing you now. You might be thinking, what about hotels? Because that really adds up when you travel. So here is my suggestion. Um, I recently decided to create sort of a loyalty for myself with hotels. Um, I chose Marriott, and I chose Marriott for a couple different reasons. Um, their credit card was having an amazing sign-up bonus. Um, Marriott is also all over the world. Um, we recently, when we went to Peru in May, we stayed at two JW Marriott's, one in Cusco and one in Lima, and fell in love with them. They were some of the nicest hotels we've stayed in. Um, and we're also staying in the JW Marriott in uh, Beijing when we go to China in November. So we figured it was the perfect year since we've stayed at so many Marriott's to kind of pull my loyalty there. Uh, Marriott is also now part of Starwood, um, which also is amazing because Starwood has a great portfolio of, of brands and they also are part of the Ritz-Carlton collection. So you get all of these hotels basically in one loyalty program um, and points wise, that's a really great way to do it. I still do um, usually spend um, most of my hotels night, hotel nights um, in boutique hotels around the world. And so when I do that, I'm either doing it through my blog, um, working with brands, hotel brands, or I'm booking through hotels.com and using my loyalty through them. But when I'm going somewhere where I do want to stay at a larger hotel, or maybe I need the comfort, if you will, of a large hotel brand. So for example, when we went to Peru, it was our first time in South America. We weren't sure what to expect, um, and we really wanted a um, the comfort of a larger hotel, a Western hotel. Same in Beijing. Um, we really wanted that that comfort, if you will, in a place that we've never been, um, our first time there. And so it's kind of nice to have that sometimes. Sometimes you want a place that offers room service or that has um, maybe a Starbucks or things like that. Uh, for your first time in certain places, I think that's well worth it. So for me, I chose Marriott. So I got their credit card. I want to say maybe about four or five months ago now um, and I spent the spending limit that you had to hit at the time to get I think it was a 50,000 uh, point bonus maybe it was more actually than that so you can see I have uh, 29,492 points left in my account I have booked a few things for our Provence uh, trip already through my Marriott points so for example one of the things we are flying back um, we fly back through San Francisco um, when I booked our Flights back from Paris to Portland, we're going Paris to San Francisco and Air France, and then 
San Francisco to Portland on Alaska. And so we booked those on our Alaska points like I just showed you. It was just a different route on a different day. Um, so for example, we have to spend the night in San Francisco. So I went straight to my Marriott points. Um, we want to stay really close to the airport just because um, we're not there for very long. So I'm going to just go to July. Um, and let's just say like July 6th. And checking out July 7th, choose that. You want to make sure that you click the use points. And then let's see what we can find. It's really important to make sure, is it worth it? Is it worth giving up 35,000 points? Because that is quite a lot of points when you could pay only $166. Now, if you're looking at any of these other properties, um, like this Fairfield, Fairfield Inn and Suites or this Courtyard San Francisco Airport um, Hotel, where it's a lot more expensive. You're getting up to almost $300 a night. Um, same with a lot of these properties, or 381 for only 25,000 points. That's when you want to really look at and see what is the equivalent in sort of a dollar ratio, and is it worth it? I usually, if it's around 150 or below for a hotel, um, I usually will just pay that, that US dollars per night and save the points for a much more expensive property. Um, I've shown you a few different types of programs that I tend to like or tend to keep my loyalty with. Um, Alaska Air is a great one, um, and especially for their partners to travel internationally. Um, Chase Sapphire Inning Plus cards are a great one to use your Chase points. Um, Marriott Hotels and um, British Airways Avios for things like rental cars or cheap hotel rooms. Um, things like that are really great. You can save a ton of money. If you have any other specific rewards travel questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below um, and I will work on that for a future post to answer more of your questions. Okay, have a great day. Bye.